Yeah, we just, um, <clears throat> we've been down at Childers HQ and also down in Hertfordshire for about four or five days. We've been a fairly intensive programme really, training guys for level two. It's ideal towards the end of the Chinese water deer season, just selecting a few of the younger cull animals, just finishing off helping Paul with his cull. And um, ideal for getting guys through the level two. I've been doing the training, Rob's been doing the witnessing, so it's, it's worked very well actually. Just, it's the last afternoon here, so we wanted to just get out. I want to have a look around and a little bit of a busman's holiday, have a little bit of a stalk myself. And with a lovely afternoon, nice evening in prospect, that there's a, I don't quite know what's going to happen because it looks like there's a hurricane coming. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We might get dumped on in a minute because the wind's just suddenly picked up and there's a rather ominous looking cloud coming over. And I'm not one for stalking in the wet, if at all possible. But there's some nice open stubble fields at the back of us here, which is usually quite sheltered. So I'm just going to go, we'll have a quick look in there and see if we can find a, find a, a deer, a deer or two out there. Um, we're on a bit of a footpath, so once we've got around the corner, then it's a bit of a sheltered, protected little area. So we'll, we'll see what we find and hopefully try and beat the weather. Yeah, so that's that's us done now. We're uh, going to head on back to HQ. So just shot a, a little young male Chinese water deer just across the, the bank in there. Fortunately, that weather seems to have blown over. I think there's another storm blowing in. Um, I like to um, leave everything undisturbed as we found it. So we growled in the hedge, a little bit of blood there, but that will soon be gone. The policy normally here is to take the deer back into the larder and grolican, which is which is a good policy because it's a high high public access. But occasionally, Paul likes a few of the, the grolics out into the stubble field for the for the kites. So a lot of red kites around here. So before long, they'll probably come drifting in, and I've got a free dinner out there or a free supper out there tonight. Um, we're gonna just walk back in down the hedge here, probably three or four fields back to the truck. Um, all growlicked out, cooling, in the predator row sack, that'll go on my shoulder, so it's a fairly easy walk in from here now, so I reckon that's been a good, a good few days and we've been sort of blessed with the weather really, we've only got one kind of wet day, um, so it could have been a lot worse. In fact, as we speak, here comes the first of the kites, just swinging in behind me.
so she's now picking up deer somewhere down below us. Now we're going to really slow stalking mode, move a little look a lot. Something there. See it alright? You shot on? Okay, whenever you're ready. So out with Tony this morning on home turf. Um, we shot a fallow and a month jack last week in deepest southern England. We're now back on home turf in a cloudy Scotland this morning but still very mild. Um, this is a tricky piece to stalk because there's a real steep banking going down as you well, as you've all seen. River in the bottom, we couldn't get over the river this morning, it's in spate, so everything we had to do was on this side. We'd have deer early on. Uh, but really too dark to positively ID it. Quite early in the door season, so I'm still only really concentrating on followers. However, we've got to shoot some of the mature doors. This is a mature door, there's no follow with her. We watched her for quite a while this morning because we've come right along the valley. Couch down here, stood and watched her for a while. She stood up, started to browse. Clearly no follower with her, so... Uh, as I say, we do have to take some of the mature animals and... She can now go on to the cool sheet. So I'm just going to do a suspended growl. We've got a bit of a walk home from here across the field. A nice tree. So um, that's what we'll do. A lot of people struggle taking a head off a deer and it's quite easy, there's no force there. You've got like the atlas joint and then sort of a flanged bone really that sits into the vertebrae and you have to kind of just tease, just tease the edge of your knife in and just sort of tease it. You're never going to cut across it so you've just got to tease it. It's no, don't need to use any pressure, dull your blade or anything, a sharp knife. Just tease it and it just comes off as easy as that. So what we've got now is a lovely carcass. That's cooling now, airflow going through it, so it's starting the, the process and because we've done a fully suspended growlick in the field, that's now going into the, the Rosac, the Apex Predator, to carry it home because I don't want to be, well not obviously, but you wouldn't be dragging this carcass across anywhere now. If you're going to have to drag, you would keep minimum body incisions just to feel growlick, a hill growlick, sorry, which is basically removing the stomach and the intestines. So we're going to do the examination of the carcass now, so we're going to look for the lymph nodes, TB indicators, particularly the submandibular and retropharyngeals in the head and the uh, mesenteric lymph node chain around the intestines, but we'll check the secondaries as well. So we've got the, uh, you know, the portal lymph node on the back of the liver, upper and lower bronchioles, mediastinal, um, shouldn't be a lot of shot damage on the lungs, so I'll be able to examine those. Sometimes shot damage causes a problem on that part of the examination, but as long as you've checked the primary lymph nodes and they're all okay, then you can eliminate 
TB. Um, kidneys, really good order. Uh, they've already gone into the dog. She's had her breakfast. That's her little reward for locating the day for us. We've done the clothes of the hooves for foot and mouth. We've looked at the eyes, the mouth, brightness, any swelling, blistering. Obviously the deer is in perfect condition, it's superb deer, it's, it's pretty evident. Uh, and the spleen, uh, spleen is an anthrax indicator so we just clean off any uh, residue from the spleen, nice plum colour. Um, once yeah. we've done that, this will be disposed of out of out the way in the brash. And uh, home James for breakfast. Right, okay, so this is the Pix for a R635 Ranger. Now, this was a unit I was out with last night. First off, I have to point out when I got back to the truck, I realised that the lens had actually built up a, a layer of condensation over it. So the footage that I got wasn't what I was hoping for. So I apologise for that. The unit is quite a bit sharper than, um, than what the, the image sort of showed. Now, um, the other thing to bear in mind is with any of these sort of things, the image that you get through the unit and what you actually see when you play the footage back on a, on a PC screen is quite a bit different. So it's a little bit like having your 4K HD massive screen TV, which looks great when you sit back on your sofa and you're, and you're watching whatever on there, the picture looks awesome. But when you walk right up to it, put your face against the screen, all you see is lots of little dots. Now, it's much the same with this. When you're looking through this unit, you're looking at a very small screen and the pixels are a lot tighter together, so it generates a much better image than what you see when that's blown up much bigger on a PC screen. So do bear that in mind. So as you can see, I'm currently filming some sheep out in the field behind there. They're probably about 400 to 450 yards, the sheep that is out there. Um, these trees in front here, they're probably, this one's probably about 100 yards, uh, that one's probably about 150, and there's a trough just next to, next to that. That's probably about 160, 170. And we've also got the farm buildings here, and there, I would think they will probably be about 500, 500 yards. So that, that kind of gives you an idea of the sort of clarity and that you get from the unit. Right, let's have a little run through of the specs of this unit. So as you can see, it's um, uh, just a, a very basic kind of design. This is an entry level unit, so it hasn't got all the thrills that you might find on um, a unit costing sort of twice the price, such as uh, Pulsar Mergers or something like that. So you've got front focus on there, a little rubber lens cap, first button you come to is the power button the next one is the camera button so the camera button records um, footage and uh, images directly to a 32 gigabyte internal memory next one is your menu button and then the back button there is your magnification so just going back to the menu button you've got a very straightforward menu set up to just scroll down through and also the uh, relevant uh, thing that you want to want to change in the menu. It also does the uh, colour palettes, so you've got six different colour palettes, so you can swap through those different colours to whatever might suit your uh, uh, situation. I quite like the green actually on this, I thought that was quite a nice, a nice colour to use. Um, magnification so you've got two times built-in magnification and then you've got an eight times digital zoom which gives you uh, just over 16 times total magnification the sensor in this is a 640 by 512 12 micron sensor uh, which is a sub 30 with an f135 millimeter lens 
This gives you a detection range on man-sized objects out to 1800 meters and runs on a rechargeable inbuilt battery which gives you around about six and a half hours um, use depending on, on the temperature. There's a little wheel on the side here so you can adjust the focus for your eye to the screen and the other thing which I've never seen on a thermal spot before is there's a little laser pointer built into this as well and the press of the hold of the magnification button uh, illuminates that little laser and you can use that as a marker so that other people can see exactly where you're looking so that could well be quite useful perhaps if you've shot uh, a deer or a fox or something and someone else is going out to pick that then um, if you're standing from the firing point you can point that laser onto the uh, onto the animal and then uh, it'll make it easier for whoever's with you to go and find and that is pretty much the Pixel Ranger R635 in a nutshell. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.